What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of How Does This Man Keep Getting a Job? As always, I am your host, Zach Cronin. And today we're going to be talking about the bizarro coaching situation that is going on with the Milwaukee Bucks, who over the last 48 hours have fired Adrian Griffin and hired Doc Rivers. This whole fiasco happened because there were reports that Adrian Griffin was losing the locker room, that um, Terry Stotts had felt undermined by him early on in training camp. There was just overall chaos, it seemed, internally within the Milwaukee Bucks. As I was doing some additional research for this video, I stumbled upon this passage in The Ringer. This was written by Kevin O'Connor. The reason the Bucks are still winning in spite of all of this is because they still have the NBA second best offense, but internally players were reportedly alarmed at the lack of structure from simple things like who's bringing the ball up to a belief in which plays were being run early in the season in a win over the Heat. Giannis changed a play that Griffin had called in the huddle after the Bucks lost to the Pacers in the in, in the in-season tournament. Bleacher reports Chris Haynes reported that Portis called out Griffin in the locker room for his lack of control of the offense down the stretch. In addition to that, the Bucks have looked like shit on defense. I think they're like 22nd or 23rd in defensive efficiency. Of course, they weren't going to be as elite as they once were, giving up Drew Holiday and replacing him with Damian Lillard, but they are underperforming, I feel like, especially when you consider the fact that you do have Brooke Lopez on the interior, you have Giannis on the interior as well, and you have Bobby Portis on the interior as well. Kevin O'Connor mentions in this article that a large reason why Milwaukee has struggled on defense is that the scheme does not reflect their personnel. Mike Budenholzer had played a little bit more conservatively. I'm paraphrasing O'Connor in this, but Budenholzer's system was a lot more conservative, whereas Griffin's system is a lot more of the bigs on the perimeter. Bobby Portis on the perimeter, Giannis on the perimeter, which compromises their defense and puts them in precarious situations. Additionally, if you have Giannis pulled away from the basket, if you have Brooke Lopez pulled away from the from the basket, when Damian Lillard does get beat because he is among the worst defensive guards in the league, there's nobody on the back end. I don't think, as I, as I already mentioned, I don't think that we are going to see Milwaukee be top 10 in defensive efficiency, but they should have a, you know, a 15th, 14th best defense. They should be in the top half of the league in terms of their defense just because of their personnel. I felt that Griffin was more or less doomed from the start for nothing more than the fact that he was a rookie head coach. You cannot ask a rookie head coach to coach a championship caliber team. It doesn't work. They are not equipped for this. You could be an assistant for 25 seasons and still have no idea where you're doing as a head coach because you have significantly more responsibilities in terms of play calling, in terms of macro game adjustments, in terms of micro game adjustments, balancing all of the egos that your stars have, maintaining the appropriate locker room dy dynamic. I mean, we saw someone like Mikey Budenholzer fail at in-game adjustments, and he's been coaching for a fucking long-ass time. It is difficult for anybody to do, let alone a rookie. So I feel that this was a, a poor hire from the beginning, I have fucking firsthand knowledge of this with Kenny Atkinson and the Brooklyn Nets. That dude was, he was never going to win early in his career with that team. It just doesn't happen. This whole situation with Milwaukee's coaching has been bizarre. So they fire Mike Budenholzer because he underperforms in the playoffs. And he has, that's something he has done throughout his career. They hire a rookie head coach who does not live up to the expectations of the team. The, I would argue, absurd expectations of him and they bring in the greatest postseason underachiever in the history of the NBA in Doc Rivers. I'm not exaggerating with what I just said. I truly believe that Doc Rivers is the greatest underachiever in the history of NBA coaches. When it comes to his performance in the postseason, he's not been great. You cannot mention him in the same conversations as guys like Greg Popovich, Eric Spolstra, Steve Kerr, despite him being one of the winningest coaches in NBA history. Former coach of the year, has had multiple 60-win seasons, has almost 1,100 wins in his career, has a regular season winning percentage of 59%. However, once you get into the postseason, for whatever reason, Doc Rivers fails to coach at the same level. 
In 215 postseason appearances, he has a record of 111 to 104. He is seven games above 500 in his postseason career, which is not what you want from a coach that you're looking to hire for a championship contender. He does, of course, have that one win, that one title that he got at the, that he got with the Boston Celtics, of course, largely because of Kevin Garnett. Paul Pierce, Ray Allen. I'm not going to hold that against him because show me a coach in the history of the NBA that has not won a title without multiple Hall of Famers. They all have. It's part of the luck. However, Doc Rivers not only coached those Hall of Famers, he (laughs) coached Chris Paul, he coached Blake Griffin, he coached Joel Embiid, he's coached James Harden. He has had very good teams, dare I say elite teams, throughout the course of his career. And this is what he has to show for it. This tweet is courtesy of Mike Prada. It says, Doc Rivers' teams have blown 3-3-1 leads, 5-3-2 leads, 1-2-0 lead, lost Game 7 at home four times, five if you count the bubble, were eliminated 10 times at home in general, 11 if you count the bubble, gone 16 and 34 with a chance to close out the series. Under this tweet, there is a graphic posted that has all of Doc Rivers' blown playoff leads He blew a 3-1 lead to the Pistons in 2003, blew 3-2 leads in 2009, 2010, and 2012 to the Magic Lakers and Heat, respectively. Another 3-1 lead he blew was against the Rockets, blew 2-0 against the Lakers, 2-1 against the Jazz, or 2-0 against the Blazers in 2016, pardon me, 2-1 against the Jazz, 3-1 against the Nuggets, 2-1 against the Hawks, 3-2 against the Celtics. The guy just cannot coach in the postseason. I don't know why. I've seen this. I made this comparison. I posted a TikTok when Mike McCarthy and the Dallas Cowboys got ass blasted by the Green Bay Packers. Mike McCarthy and Doc Rivers are the same coach in two different sports. For whatever reason, they're incapable of adjusting in the postseason against the better teams. I don't know if it has to do with um, in-game adjustments. I'm not trying to compare um, NFL in-game adjustments to NBA in-game adjustments. I'm just speaking. I'm just speaking in, in vagities here i don't know if it has to do with in-game adjustments i don't know if he's making the wrong adjustments if he's making no adjustments at all i just don't think that this is the appropriate way to have gone about this in milwaukee i think they're setting themselves up for failure there were also some rumors floating around that griffin was the guy to have Giannis sign that long-term extension which if that is the case that is vile that is disgusting to put him in that position and then to not even give him a chance well I don't want to say give him a chance to prove himself because it clearly wasn't working but then again they the the organization put him in this position would there have been somebody else better on the market I don't know I don't know I don't think Mark Jackson would have been a great hire Jeff Van Gundy maybe but I don't know if he even wants to coach this is just a super bizarro situation for the Bucks, and I don't I don't know how this is going to translate I'm I'm very concerned with bringing a new voice into the locker room midway through the season although the Bucks are 30 and 13 they still have Giannis who's coming off a fucking 35 point 18 rebound 10 assist triple double is going to be a top five finalist for MVP, Damian Lillard is playing is playing spectacular basketball as well, even though he's not the Damian Lillard that we're used to seeing. I'm just very concerned for this organization going forward. Because you look at the top of the conference, Boston has everything figured out. They are the team to beat in the East. You have Philadelphia. Joel Embiid is the front runner for MVP in my eyes. They seemingly have everything figured out as well. Organizational incompetence is the greatest threat to any team in the NBA, any team that's trying to rebuild, any team that's trying to compete for a title. Obviously, hindsight is 2020, but hiring Adrian Griffin was not the appropriate move. And I don't know if replacing him with Doc Rivers is going to be the appropriate move either. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. Thank you all so very much for coming to hang out with me today. As always, everything is down in the description box below Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video. If you enjoyed it, drop a comment as well. It really helps out with the algorithm. If you do any of those three things, you will become my new favorite person. And with that, I'll see you all in the next one.